Welcome to The Naomi Show. Hello and welcome to the show. Now, inevitably, we end up having arguments in relationships, but what are the rules of fighting fair? Well, psychologist John Aiken is joining me today to talk about the rules of engagement. Now, John, it's not all about winning, though, is it? No, absolutely not. Uh, but it is about expressing your feelings and getting the issues out on the table. You know, so many people say, John, we've got a great relationship because we never fight. That always worries me. Mm. Because Why does it worry you, though? Well, because essentially what it says is that someone, one or both of them, are probably holding back on the issues and the worries that they've got and they're not expressing themselves or being comfortable in the relationship. Uh, it's, there's not a problem with fighting. The issue is how you fight, how you argue, how you deal with conflict. That's the bigger issue. Some people are really good at it and others are terrible at it. Now, when you say good at it and terrible at it, you mean good at it in terms of having the conflict, getting it sorted out without it escalating into something that could actually damage your relationship. Is that right? What you That's mean? exactly right. Yeah. People that are, uh, are very good at managing conflict do certain things that the people that are very bad at managing conflict don't do. So those people that aren't particularly good at arguing, they will uh, throw personal attacks about and they might raise their voices, walk out, slam doors, they, they might talk down to the person or really stonewall them and give them the cold shoulder. Uh, and so it, it essentially short circuits the argument and it creates great tension. Uh, whereas the people that are very good at arguing don't do those things. Okay, so what do the people who are good at arguing do? Well, the first thing they do is they listen, but they don't fix. Okay. So when you come home, Naomi, after a hard day and at the a office. Tough one for guys, oh, yeah, it? terrible. Because guys want to feel, and, and I understand that, but guys often want to, if a, a woman says, oh, I don't like this or that, they want to fix it. Yeah. But women often just need to be listened to. Yeah, that's Sorry right. Sorry to interrupt you there, but I just want to say that <laughs> is one that men, yeah, do. Yeah, we can be really with. guilty of it, absolutely. And yeah. it's a shocker because uh, essentially what we do is we think we're helping the situation, but in fact, uh, we're not because we're not acknowledging it, we're not letting you sit with it, and often you'll work through it yourself just by talking about yes. it. Yes. Uh, and so, particularly guys out there, uh, listen but don't fix. Another uh, key uh, factor, if you like, to healthy arguing is that you let the person finish and you acknowledge their point rather than coming in over the top. You know, some people are terrible, they'll say in sessions when I'm seeing them in private practice, um, someone will start talking, the other one will go, no, no, I don't look at it like that. <laughs> or they'll finish their conversations and they'll just jump in over the top and you've literally got to say to them, hey, let this person have the floor right now. So letting them finish is really important. And, and look, that's probably learned behaviour, isn't it? It's just perhaps learned from their parents and, and yeah. people they've been around who've argued. So it's not like they're bad people. No. It's just that they just can't help it, but they just need to be aware of it. Is that right? Be, be absolutely aware of it. Yeah. And then uh, another key aspect is uh, that the people that are really good with conflict, they avoid personal attacks mm. and character assassinations and generalisations like, Naomi, you always or you never. Yeah. Mm. You know, because when you're using those sorts of words, uh, you get on the defensive yep. and, and you basically strike back. So avoiding those sorts of terms is really important. Then one of the keys is uh, solving an issue as a team. So you bring a problem to, to the table rather than saying, I can't believe you got us into that place, Naomi. Couldn't you have done this, this and this? <laughs> Why is it always my fault? Yeah, exactly. And then you start <laughs> playing the blame game. Instead of doing that, you want to say, here's the problem. What do you think we can do about it? And then you'll throw it back to me and say, well, John, what, they're, they're my thoughts. What do you thought, think about all of this? And so what you're doing is you're basically working together to solve the problem or the issue uh, or the conflict rather than pointing fingers and, uh, you know, going back to the past. And then finally, the people that are really good at fighting, uh, if things do escalate, they excuse themselves. Right. Take a bit of time out. They might go to another room, calm themselves down and then come back to it rather than where some couples, they just keep escalating and then you get throwing, you know, breaking furniture, yeah. throwing things and you just get into a place where you, you tend to feel like it gets on top of you. Mm. And I guess finally, I suppose, remembering why you love the person and that this is hopefully just a minor issue that you're arguing over. Yeah, that's right. And Keeping it in perspective. Keeping it in perspective. And often one way you can do that is you can say to yourself after you've had the... Uh, the argument and you've got some resolution, you know, uh, reminding yourself as you say, what do I like about this person? And doing something that 
actually makes the two of you really good together. And all you have to do is think back, what, what do we do that makes us feel great? It might be a date night, but it might be sitting down over a glass of wine uh, and you know, talking about the day, whatever it is. But do something like that fairly soon after the argument. So that I think you just it's called makeup sex, isn't it? Well, then there's, then there's the makeup sex too, which yeah, a lot of people just go straight to that because uh, that tends which to is more uh, healthy, I think. yeah, that's right, and it tends to solve everything very quickly. Uh, but having some sort of activity afterwards that just sort of consolidates and repairs what you've just had really okay. important. Great advice, John. Thank you so much for that, John Aiken, psychologist and also the author of Accidentally Single. So check that out at bookstores, and we'll see you next time. Your love life, let's talk about it at naomishow.com.